If you have your Bibles this morning, please turn to Matthew chapter 3. I would like to read Matthew chapter 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 this morning. So, last Sunday we began looking at the gospel. Sometimes the word gospel has reference to the entire word of God. The entire body of truth. The Bible, this Bible, this book, the word of God is inspired by God and it is all the word of God and it is sometimes as its entirety referred to as the gospel then the word of God also within the gospel we sometimes read about the gospel of God that's the good news about God specifically dealing with God in general Uh, we read about And we studied last Sunday night about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news about Jesus Christ. There are everything about God is true about Jesus Christ. But there are things in the gospel of Jesus Christ that are very particular to the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came down into the earth. Though he was God... Yet he became man. And uh, we need to thank God for the good news about Jesus Christ. Today, the Lord willing, we're going to be studying about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the gospel of God. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven is about the king who is Jesus, but it is limited to everything pertaining to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are two different phrases that are used interchangeably in the scriptures. Kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are the same thing. So we read about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven and we read about the gospel of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is defined in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. The word of God says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not a material kingdom. You remember the Jews in the Old Testament, they were looking that when the Messiah came, he was going to establish his kingdom. Isaiah and Daniel, many of the prophets of old talked about the kingdom that was going to be established when Jesus came and when Jesus came into the earth and began to preach and to teach the Jews did not believe that he was the Messiah because they did not see his kingdom they were looking for a material kingdom like David of old had because Jesus is called the son of David and so they were looking for Jesus to set up a natural material kingdom where Jesus was going to reign as king of the kingdom over the whole earth. And even the apostles thought that was what was going to happen for a while. And they thought, well, let me sit at the right hand. My brother sit at the left hand. Let's let's be a part of your main board on the kingdom of heaven. But that's not what the kingdom of heaven is. Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not a material kingdom, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is. It is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now the kingdom of heaven is completely different than the eternal heaven. The eternal heaven is where all the family of God will be when this world is over. That's the eternal heaven. We do not get to the eternal heaven based on what we do or our works or our faithfulness or us believing or anything else. We enter the eternal heaven because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the amazing grace of God. That's the only reason that we'll be in the eternal heaven. And the word of God says the number that will be in the eternal heaven are as the sands of the seashore and as the stars of heaven innumerable and as... Uh, uh, as the dust of the earth 
There's a multitude of people that are going to be in the eternal heaven when this world is over. That's who Jesus paid for their sins. But then the word of God talks about the kingdom of heaven and that's for God's obedient children while they live here in this world. It's a heaven here on earth. It's a spiritual heaven on earth. It's a spiritual a spiritual heaven or a spiritual kingdom. And it's that feeling that we get when we're walking close to God and we feel that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. But in Luke 17 verses 20 and 21 when Jesus, after he had been preaching all about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, he had been preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, the Pharisees began to demand Jesus to tell them where is this kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. You keep saying it's at hand. You keep saying it's here. But we can't find this kingdom that you're talking about. And Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. What does that mean? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. What? Okay, you can't see it. If you observe something, you see it with your eyes. The kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. You hear that last expression there. The kingdom of God is within you. And you can only be in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven be in you when you're walking in obedience to the teachings and commandments of God. Now let's look at the gospel of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I tell you that's good news, the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God. It's good news. I'm glad to tell you this morning that one day we're going to go home to be with God in that eternal heaven. <clears throat> one day we're going to leave this world and all the troubles of this world, all the problems of this world. One day we're going to be relieved of yielding to temptation one day we're going to be relieved of all sin and we're going to be carried home to be with God forever that's in the eternal heaven but I'm glad to tell you that God comes down here and dwells with us while we live here on this earth I'm glad to tell you it's good news for me to know the Lord is with me now the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is here with us today. And we need to thank God that Emmanuel, Jesus in the flesh, God is still with us today. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. And it's within you. Now let's look at the uh, word of God. And let's see that this gospel of the kingdom of heaven is what was preached throughout the New Testament. Look in your Bibles at Matthew chapter 3. Look at verses 1 and 2. Please follow this in your Bibles. Please look in your Bible. Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. The word of God says in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is what? What are the last two words there? At hand. at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now that's good news. It's at hand. It's now. I'm glad to tell you I don't have to be in Waycross or in Jerusalem. You know in that old Jerusalem over there across the water. I've never been there, never planned to go there. Because that Jerusalem is nothing compared to the new Jerusalem. And I'm not going to spend two or three or four thousand dollars to go over there to a place that's not as good as what I can have right here in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. There are people in that old Jerusalem that can be in the kingdom of heaven. There are people in China and Russia and Africa and every country in this world where there are children of God that love the Lord and serve the Lord. They can be in the kingdom of heaven because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here. It's now. And that's the good news or the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And the word of God says that John the Baptist Baptist began to preach and to say, repent ye. Do we have to do something to enter the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. 
Yes, we have to repent. Actually, we can tell you a bunch of things you have to do. The Word of God tells us many things. But one of the things you have to do, and I have to do to be in the kingdom of heaven, is I have to repent. Repent ye. Turn away. The word repent does not mean feel sorry about sin you're committing. It means turn away from it. Repent ye. Turn away from sin and turn toward Jesus and follow Jesus and take up your cross in water baptism. I'll tell you, brethren, we as a people of God, we need to repent and believe the gospel. The gospel of what? Right now, what are we talking about? The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Jesus began to preach. Now who was preaching in Matthew 3, 1 and 2? John the Baptist. Matthew 4 verse 17. Jesus begins to preach and from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. Repent. Again, Jesus is preaching the same gospel, the same good news that John the Baptist was preaching about. What is the gospel that Jesus preached? He preached the gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. It's sad to me today that many of God's children know nothing about this good news of the kingdom of heaven. We need to do everything we can to spread the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Turn to Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. The Word of God says in Matthew 4 verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the what? Kingdom. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's the gospel that Jesus Christ, Christ preached about. He preached the good news about the kingdom of heaven, which is at hand, that we can enter now instead of having to wait until we die to go to the eternal heaven. You can have fellowship with God in the kingdom of heaven. You can walk with the king. You can dwell with the king. You, sit, you can sit down with the king in his kingdom on his throne. You and I as a people of God ought to rejoice abundantly that Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the what? According to Matthew 4.23, he was preaching the gospel of the what? Kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Now, he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 5. We have the Sermon on the Mount. In the Sermon on the Mount, what was the main subject that Jesus preached about in the Sermon on the Mount? He preached about the kingdom of heaven nine times, nine times in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Nine times Jesus specifically is preaching about this kingdom. Look in your Bibles at Matthew 5 verse 3, beginning in the Sermon on the Mount. I want you just to notice in these nine times that he's preaching about the kingdom. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. The word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Come down to Matthew chapter. Now listen, if you look at Matthew 5, 10, 11, and 12, and the Lord will bless you, you'll see something you've never seen before, I think. Matthew 5 beginning in verse 10, the word of God says, Blessed are they which are persecuted. Remember that word. Blessed are they that persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the what? <laughs> theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are there great rewards in the kingdom of heaven for God's obedient children? When you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Are there rewards for you while you live here in this world? Are there great rewards for you in the kingdom of heaven? Yes, there are. And he says here in verse 10, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Listen now to verse 11. He reiterates what he says in verse 10, but he goes deeper. He says in verse 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now that's being persecuted like he's talking about in verse 10. And then in verse 12 he goes back to being persecuted. He says rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now who did they, prof who did they persecute before they started persecuting the apostles? They persecuted the prophets. And he says now 
Rejoice that you are being persecuted. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Which heaven is it that you are rewarded for, for being persecuted? It's the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. You see the connection in verses 10 and 12. When you're persecuted, great, blessed are those that are persecuted, for they will uh, inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So come down to verse 19, for the sake of time, 519. Now listen carefully. In the rest of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is going to show the difference in the Jews' religion and what he was teaching. In the Jews' religion, they concentrated on the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not, and, and you have the thou shalt nots and four thou shalt. They concentrated on the Ten Commandments. What Jesus does is, he says, now when you follow me, you've got to do more than just keep the Ten Commandments. I'm going to raise the level of righteousness that you have to have in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. The level of righteousness to enter the kingdom of heaven is higher than it was for them to have their kingdom in the Jews' religion. Matthew chapter 5 verse 19 Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Can you be small and great in the kingdom of heaven? Yes. Can you be small and great in the eternal heaven? No. Brethren, when we, when we enter the eternal heaven, we're all going to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Of God. There are not going to be any big eyes and little U's in the eternal heaven. But there is a difference in the level of joy that we can experience in the kingdom of heaven. And he says in verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Does your righteousness have to go beyond the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees in order for you to enter the kingdom of heaven? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And he explains that in the next three verses. In verse 21 he says, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Was that part of the Pharisees' religion? Was that true? Was it good? Was there anything wrong with that commandment, Thou shalt not kill? Nothing wrong with that commandment. But Jesus says, I'm setting a higher standard than just thou shalt not kill. He says, Ye have heard that, that it, had, it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the count in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Do you hear, do you hear brethren, what the standard of Jesus is? You cannot be what? Tell me what he's talking about. He's not talking about killing your brother. What's he saying? You can't be angry at your brother. Now, how many of you have ever been so angry you don't, don't raise your hand. Some, I know some people, I know some people that have been so angry at people that had God not restrained them, they would have killed somebody else. You understand what I'm saying? In a fit of rage, they have been so angry that they would have killed somebody had God not stopped them. I just want you to know, brethren, that Jesus has a standard far higher than than the standard of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And he says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the, what? Into the kingdom of heaven. Unless you stop hating, you're going to be out of the kingdom of heaven. If you hold anger and malice in your heart, if you hate somebody while you're hating them, you're going to be out of the kingdom of heaven. Now there are some people that you might feel very strongly against. 
And we don't ever say we hate anybody because Jesus says here not to. So we're good Christians and we would never hate anybody, would we? Well, we say we wouldn't, but deep down in our soul, we might. And, and, and sometimes, brethren, there are, there are people you just have to put out of your mind and put out of your life and just forget about them. But if you, if you just keep harboring that hatred, you have to pray for God to help you to get over that. Do you see the standard Jesus calls for? What was the standard of the scribes and Pharisees? Thou shalt not what? Kill. What's the standard of Jesus? Thou shalt not be angry with thy brother. And Jesus gives about six different things in the rest of this chapter. He says now, here's the standard of the scribes and Pharisees. Here's my standard. Here's the scribes and, uh, here's the standard of, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Come down, come down with me now to, uh, well, let's go to Matthew chapter 6 very quickly. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to think about these words now. I've been saying the Lord's Prayer since I was a little bitty boy. This example prayer that Jesus gave it. I remember at night this and, and, and other prayers. We would pray this prayer and then pray other prayers. We would, we would say this prayer, pray this prayer, and then we would pray whatever was on our heart. You understand what I'm saying? When I was a little boy. And in school, we always prayed this example prayer before classes really got started in the morning. Here's what the example prayer says. Matthew 6, 9 and 10. Do you know the example prayer talks about the kingdom of heaven? Matthew 6, verses 9 and 10. And after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed. Now which heaven is the Father in? The eternal heaven. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then he says, we are to pray, thy kingdom, what? Come. Thy kingdom, come. Well, we want the kingdom of God to come down and be with us. Did you know we can't conjure up the Spirit of God? We can't make the Spirit of God do anything. We need to come to the house of God praying that God will fill us with His Spirit that we can be in the kingdom of heaven while we're in the house of God. You can come to the house of God and not be any closer to the kingdom of heaven than you are in a bar somewhere. You and I as a people of God, we need the presence of the Spirit of God to be able to worship Him in spirit and in truth. There are some of you that I watched during some of the songs Songs that you are singing in the spirit and singing with understanding and if you want to be in the kingdom of heaven you have to sing in the spirit and sing with understanding and then you're in the what you're in the kingdom of heaven and and what has come the kingdom is what thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven verse 13 uh, Matthew 6 verse 13 and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Whose kingdom is it? God. It's God's kingdom. It's not our kingdom. Whose church is it? God. It's God's church. It's not our church. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Come down to Matthew 6 verse 33. All of you know this one by heart. But seek ye first the what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Is that good news, brethren? Amen. It's good news to me to know if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I know that Jesus is going to supply all my needs. And that's a great blessing. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about anything. In fact, he tells me, just before he tells me this, he says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about your clothing. Seek first. What's the good news? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's good news about the kingdom of heaven. Coming down to Matthew 7, verse 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. The word of God says, not, this is Jesus still speaking in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7 verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Now I want you to remember this, we're going to come back to it later. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in what? Where is the Father? 
He's in eternal heaven. And what do you have to do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, can you just call on the name of the Lord and be in the kingdom of heaven? Absolutely not. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Brethren, there are many things that we have to do to do the will of the Father. For example, turn to Matthew chapter 18 very quick. Well, let me, let, me, let me stop at Matthew 9. Stop in Matthew 9. Matthew 9 verse 35. Matthew 9 verse 35. The scripture. Now this is not the same. It sounds very similar to what we've already read. But this is a different time. Matthew says in Matthew 9 uh, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What was he preaching? The good news about what? The good news about the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The good news of the gospel. Turn to Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Listen please to verses 14 and 15. What are we talking about this morning? What did we talk about last Sunday morning? The gospel of what? The gospel of God. What did we talk about last Sunday night? The gospel of Jesus Christ. What are we talking about this morning? The gospel of the kingdom. Mark. Mark chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. The word of God says now after that John was put in prison. Which John was that? That was John the Baptist. Why was he put in prison? He was doing the will of the Father. What was he put in the prison for? Telling Herod it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Was he doing good by telling Herod that? He was doing exactly what he was supposed to be doing. Was he persecuted for doing good? He was put in prison. In fact, he was beheaded for doing what was right. But guess what he had? He had the kingdom of heaven. That's exactly right. Mark chapter 1 verse 14, the word of God says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The good news of the what? The kingdom of God. Well why? Did, why? After John was put in prison, why did they need to hear so much about the gospel of the kingdom of God? Because brethren, there were many disciples of John the Baptist that their faith began to be shaken because they saw the persecution that John was experiencing and they wanted to give up and go home. But Jesus began to preach to them the gospel of the kingdom. The scripture says here, the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was telling them, keep doing right. Keep serving the Lord. Stand fast. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Doing the will of the Father. Because not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the what? Enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 15 says in saying, the time is fulfilled and, the, oh by the way, the time is fulfilled. <laughs> you can go back to all these Old Testament references and see what Jesus is talking about. The, the time, was there a time for Jesus to be born? And when Jesus was born, in the place he was born, it says the time was fulfilled. And then he went to Nazareth, and the time was fulfilled. And now the word of God says, Mark 1, 15, Jesus was saying the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. I want you to hear the last words of that verse. Repent ye and believe what? What gospel? What is the gospel that he is talking about? When he says, repent ye and believe the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 16 very quickly. Back up in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16 verses 27 and 28. I want you to know that while Jesus was here on the earth, Matt, while Jesus was here on the earth, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to come back he was going to come back and he was going to destroy the old Jerusalem and he was going to set up the new Jerusalem which is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 16 verses 27 and 28. Do you know what Jesus does today as king of his kingdom? He is rewarding his people according to their what? He is rewarding his people according to their works. And when our works are evil... Does he reward us? 
Yes. yes, he does. See, we think of a reward as something good. I saw in a paper or on uh, something this week where somebody lost a Britney Spaniel and they said we'll offer a reward of $500 to $1,000 to get this, this dog back. I understand. When you love a dog like that and you've lost it, then you want it, want it back. They offer the reward. But listen, brethren, when the Bible talks about rewards, it talks about you being rewarded for well-doing and it also talks about you being rewarded for evil-doing. doesn't mean you get something good for doing evil. It means you're going to get what you deserve when you do evil and you're going to get what you deserve when you do what's right. And what you deserve when you do what's right is the kingdom of heaven. And the reward you get for doing wrong is you're going to suffer a hell on earth not talking about dying and going to hell. I'm talking about a born again child of God that does wrong and goes away from God and backslides. That child of God can experience a hell while they live here in this world. Matthew 16 verses 27 and 28. Jesus is still here on the earth in this passage of scripture and he says, For the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Capital S-O-N, Son of Man. Jesus, the Son of Man shall come. What's the verb tense there? Future, future. He's talking about another coming after his first coming. Tell me about his first coming. His first coming was when he was born of the Virgin Mary. That was his first coming. And then he says, while he's here on this earth, in that first coming, he says the Son of Man shall come, a future coming. And it's not his final coming that he's talking about. You'll see that if you'll follow it. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his what? Were there people that were still standing there that were alive when Jesus came back in 70 AD? Yes, there were. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Oh, what a great privilege it is to know Jesus has come. I'm glad to know he came the first time. I'm glad to know he accomplished what he came to do the first time, and that's to save us from our sins and to establish his church. But I'm also glad to tell you this morning the good news is not just that he came the first time, but the good news is that he came back. He rose from the grave, and he began to rule and reign and reward as King of kings and Lord of lords. And Jesus is on his throne today, reigning as King. And he is ruling over all this world right now. Especially he is reigning in his kingdom. And he's rewarding in his kingdom. I'm just going to have to stop right there. That's not the end of the story. <laughs> I do hope and pray that God will bless you to see the beauty. The wonderful glorious beauty. That God in his amazing grace. Hasn't just set up an eternal heaven for us when we die. But God has set up the kingdom of heaven for us while we live here in this world. May God help us to serve him so that we can dwell in the kingdom of heaven is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.